you know, sometimes I get to an article and I think, oh, I should do a video about this or I should talk about it. And it's just so long. It's just they go on and on and on. I've been thinking about doing, you know, just talking about this, the Wuhan files, uh, which is kind of an interesting article. But it, it is just so long. Ugh, it's, it would take an hour just to go through it. I don't know if I want to do it. Maybe what I'll do is just kind of skim and tell you some things that I noticed. So this is a report from CNN uh, called the Wuhan Files. It says, leaked documents reveal China's mishandling of the early stages of COVID-19. So we all know that uh, that China didn't deal with this perfectly, to say the least. Uh, I do have a timeline of of everything that that's you know publicly known about what China went through. Um, so I do want to bring that up and kind of compare it to what they're saying here. Apparently I've lost it. So this report will uh, will illuminate some of those missteps, it says. So it starts out uh, yapping. I, I hate it when people tell news as if it's a story. Like, oh, a group of medical workers were tired and blah, blah. Just get to the point. So here's the point. February 10th, um, Chinese like, okay, all these other words, all, all of this means nothing. All of this means nothing. It's just literally February 10th, Chinese authorities reported this many new confirmed cases. Okay, that's all that says. Very annoying for people like me who actually read this thing. So here we go. COVID. China. Why does this thing always uh, look wrong? Sorry. Here we go. All right. So COVID China. They're talking about February 10th. All right. So February 10th. Sorry. Some of this I'm still reverting from having been uh, the U.S. timeline as well. And the software kind of sucks. Okay, so these are these beige items are things that we learned on certain days. Might be helpful here. All right, forget the bottom stuff. It's really just from this line and up. I'll zoom out a little bit. What the hell is this? Oh, this is Europe. Let me collapse that. All right. So February 10th. So let's get some context. February 10th, the virus may have been airborne. Not sure. It's possible. Incubation period, maximum 24 days. Reinfection may be possible. Aerosol transmission is possible. Right? These are things that we knew at that time. In China here, they were about to send 6,000 medical staff down to uh, Hubei. The uh, new hospitals were opening in Wuhan. Right? That's these two. Lots of stuff going on. Okay? Active cases, which means the um, cases minus the uh, dead and minus the recovered. So the people that are actually sick on a given day. The 10th is about 37,000-ish. And the uh, deaths, this is only China, by the way. And the deaths was about uh, about 1,000. So, this says they reported 2,478 new confirmed cases. Confirmed cases. Now, back then, um, China was not reporting to the world asymptomatic cases. Okay, so this says 2,478 new confirmed cases, raising the total global number to more than 40,000 with fewer than 400 cases outside of China. This report was released about an hour later. Um, I don't want to say an hour later because that's the updated time. 
it, it seemed to be released the same day as the other report that I was reading from that says uh, that the virus was in America much earlier. So keep that in mind because here it says fewer than 400 cases outside of mainland China. When in reality, by February 10th, according to the other article that I covered by NPR and the study, that fewer than 400 was more like, February 10th, something like 10 million cases. Fewer than 400, 10 million. So uh, CNN can now reveal how uh, documents circulate internally, show that this was only part of the picture. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So this is saying that uh, there was underreporting. Blah, blah, blah. Then it says, China's accounting system seemed in the early weeks of the pandemic to downplay the severity of the outbreak. All right. So apparently there was 117 pages of leaked documents from uh, Hubei's Provincial Center for Diseases Control and Prevention shared with and verified by CNN. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is interesting. The Chinese government has rejected accusations made by the U.S. and other Western governments that it deliberately concealed information relating to the virus Blah, 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 blah. However, though the documents provide no evidence of a deliberate attempt to obfuscate findings, well, okay, done. End of article. Um, they do reveal numerous inconsistencies in what authorities believe to be happening and what was revealed to the public. Okay, so, so far this article has said uh, China has been accused of covering up and there's no evidence of that. Okay, so let's take a look at what this does reveal. So this part's interesting. It says that there was an outbreak of influenza in early December. Wuhan was the third worst hit. All right. Blah, blah, blah. Here it says, and then it just changes the subject. It comes back to this later. It says, one of the more striking data points concerns the slowness with which local COVID-19 patients were diagnosed. Wow, okay. So let's take a look at this. We're talking about a period of time that leads up to February 10th, according to their lead. All right. Now we know that the earliest COVID-19 case known to man well, was in Italy. Uh, and after that, we know that there was, uh, we also have Brazil and other countries claiming, but let, let's just stick with China. The first case that they're depending on here is December 1st. So the longest possible time that it could have taken to diagnose, right, is 26 days. 26 days? Yeah, because the 26 is when... Uh, Dr. Zhang was basically, you know, the the this is where we start to consider that cases have been more or less confirmed or diagnosed as 26 through about the 28th. So let's just say, yeah, it, it took them 26 days, 25, 26 days to make their first um, their first uh, uh, confirmations, diagnoses. So that's uh, seems pretty long time. It's nowhere even close to as long as other places, but sure, if we just isolate China and we don't try to compare it to America and we just say only China, should that have been faster? Yes, it should have been faster. Again, please do not try to compare this to the United States because you're going to get huge surprises when you find out that it was longer for them and China didn't even know what it was dealing with in the beginning, so it should have been even longer for China. But again, let's not get you know relative here. So um, that's a striking data point, apparently. Blah, 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 blah. Local health officials were reliant on flawed testing and reporting mechanisms. 
I mean, compared to what? But, okay. The average time between the onset of symptoms to confirm diagnosis, oh, here we go, 23.3 days. Oh, okay, so it's pretty fast, actually. Especially considering this data point here. This lady was tested eight times negative and then on the ninth time positive. So we know that testing in the beginning was very, very inaccurate. And we also know that the United States, actually, let me bring the U.S. over here. The U.S. definitely, for sure, had cases of COVID-19 starting in December 13th. All right, which I haven't added yet. So we know December 13th, United States had apparently millions of cases. And their first diagnosis was about a month later, one case. They diagnosed one person out of apparently millions. So um, another way to say this sentence is that the average time between the onset of symptoms to confirm diagnosis was 23.3 days, which experts have told CNN would have been significantly hampered uh, would have significantly hampered steps to both monitor and combat the, the disease. However, it was still way faster than the United States, and they didn't even know what they were dealing with at the time, so that kind of magnifies how fast it was. For some reason, it doesn't say that. China has defended its handling of the outbreak. Good. It should defend it. Um, blah, 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 blah. They're saying that they release information in a timely, open, and transparent fashion, which, by the way, every country will always say. Blah, 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 blah. China has acted, you know, in a good way. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is all just rambling. It was clear that they did make mistakes. Uh-huh, yep. And not just mistakes that happen when you're dealing with a novel virus. Also bureaucratic and politically motivated errors in how they handle it. So this guy says that. I wonder what I would find if I search for his name. Uh, okay, so blah, blah, blah. You can't guarantee 100% transparency. Yes, we know all this. I mean, the United States has admitted very, very, very clearly that this entire time of just hundreds and thousands of enormous gatherings, that they're under-reporting the cases by huge percent. I mean, all these brown items, 90% of cases under-reported, that's the CDC saying that. So again, this is not about a co comparison, but when you're looking at an article from someone in the United States, you kind of have to go, well, yeah, you can't guarantee 100% transparency, but... I mean, are we talking about the known cases was 10% of the real cases? Because that's the situation in the United States, according to the United States. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, this not about it's, this isn't what aboutism. It's are you stepping over a thousand bodies to complain about ten bodies, or like what 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 are you talking about? Can we add a little bit of context here? And this part's interesting. Even if they had been 100% transparent, that would not stop the Trump administration downplaying the seriousness of it. It probably would not have stopped this developing into a pandemic. That is absolutely correct. Um, blah, 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 blah. So this Lancet Medical Journal does in fact say that there was a case December 1st. So, Hubei was dealing with a significant influenza outbreak, placing enormous levels of additional stress on an already stretched healthcare system. My God, China did an even better, uh, an even better job than we thought. So, not only were they much faster than the better prepared countries like the United States, they also didn't know what they were dealing with. And there was a huge outbreak of influenza unrelated to this that was also taxing the system at the same time. Wow. Whew. The influenza epidemic 
was not only present in Wuhan in December, blah, 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 blah. There's no suggestion that the two crises are linked. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of this is just rambling. And this always annoys me. Access for international experts to hospital medical records and raw data has been limited, with the WHO saying they had reassurances from the Chinese government that a trip to the field will be granted as part of their investigation. Well, how is any of this relevant? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is, uh, this is interesting when they talk about how they verified the document. That was very, very interesting. The files were presented to CNN by a whistleblower who requested to be anonymous... They said that they worked in the healthcare system and that they are a patriot and they want to expose the truth, which is kind of interesting because so far the truth is, wow, China did a way better job than even I thought they did. I didn't know about this huge influenza outbreak at the same time. My God, this is like even better than I thought. So I guess he's releasing these because he wants the world to know how much better they did. So uh, let's see. They've been verified by six independent experts who examined them on behalf of CNN. All right. Um, one expert with close ties to China. <laughs> what does that mean, close ties to China? Does he Is he an English teacher here? Or... I don't know what that means. So I don't care what he said. Goodbye. A European security official. Okay, that sounds a little better. With knowledge of Chinese internal documents. Again, this sounds very vague. Why don't you just tell us who the experts are? You know what I mean? Like, why is it a European security official with knowledge of documents? <laughs> um, Confirm that they were genuine. Okay. Metadata from the files contains the names of serving officials and authors. Blah, blah, blah. Creation dates align with the content. Digital forensic analysis was also performed to test their computer code <laughs> against the purported origins. Oh, the computer code in these documents. So what this actually means is that if it was a PDF or a JPEG or something, they're, I mean, what they're saying they did essentially is probably that they used like a hex editor and went through and tried to make sure that it wasn't um, made from, you know, a, a different PC or printed out from a certain printer. It's not really clear. It depends on the format, but generally looking for hints inside of the file that, that it wasn't created in a, in a manner that uh, it's being presented. The reality is there's actually no way to verify that a file was created somewhere at a certain place and it was used. You know, there's no way to really say the document is real. There's only ways to say that it isn't real. And those are actually quite limited. So this doesn't mean quite as much as it sounds like, but it sounds cool. Um, no evidence the data have been tampered with, blah, blah, blah. This part's interesting. The older files look like they had been used repeatedly over a long period of time. That means that there must be some sort of version history or, um, you know, so maybe that's a, a, a Word doc. Not, not many files actually hold version history. So that's kind of interesting. It's almost like a mini file system. It's got lots of room for deleted stuff, for old things. So again, I don't know what that means. Most documents don't have that in them. Um, and by the way, if you look at the scroll bar over here, this is how far down we are. We're not even close. So I'm going to just speed this up a bit. The point basically of this thing is that it says um, here they reported this many new confirmed cases. But uh, the document says that it was actually this many. And so we can take a look. This is apparently what they reported on a certain day. And this is what it says on the document. So again, how many of these were uh, symptomatic? 
doesn't say. They just completely ignore this again and again, which is probably why people like, um, what was her name? Danielle DiMartino Bluth. This is probably why why far right conspiracy theorists like her think that, you know, this never happened, that the asymptomatic and symptomatic was just totally irrelevant. But actually it was very relevant because they were literally saying, okay, well, they have the, the, the virus. Are they symptomatic? No? Okay, well, then they're not a confirmed case. I mean, this is what they were doing for a certain amount of time. And that actually changed based on the time and region that they were in. Is that perfect? No. It should have been done more uniformly. But it also leads to stuff like this that people just immediately make the worst assumption and go, oh, they tried to lie. But I'm going to show you later in this document, even this document doesn't think that. So blah, 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 um, the strict and limiting criteria led ultimately to misleading figures. So first of all, it says right there that uh, it's sort of saying what I'm saying. Suspected cases should not, been, uh, should not have been included with the confirmed cases. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. So this is sort of just rambling and sort of saying what I'm saying. But keep in mind, nobody's gotten this far. I mean... 60 whatever percent of the people just saw this. Oh, okay. China mishandle early stages COVID-19. My conspiracy theory has been proven. They don't, nobody's reading this shit. So, uh, unfortunately for me, I can't do that. I just need to read them. I'm, I'm crazy like that. So blah, blah, blah. There's some other good parts in here too. Uh, okay. So Blah, blah, blah. It's sort of minimized the impact at any given time. Uh, to include patients who were suspected of having the infection obviously would have expanded the size of outbreak and would have given, I think, a truer appreciation of the nature of the infection and its size. Now, again, nothing in here says, oh, and by the way, we had something like 5 million cases in the United States at this time, and we just did nothing about it and told zero people. None of that says that. So let's just focus on what this guy's saying. What he's saying is, if you suspect something, then you should report them as being confirmed so that the whole world can understand that this is very scary. Um, I disagree. I completely disagree. You should You should report the confirmed numbers as confirmed and i believe that they actually did have suspected numbers am i crazy i, I seem to remember reading this so suspected is if a patient had contact um blah 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 and at this time published in late january yes late january that's after this, okay? So that's irrelevant to anything that you just showed. Blah, blah, blah. So it's just sort of rambling about how uh, it wasn't perfect. There was some confusion over how to report. All right, death tolls. March 7, uh, death toll was here. But the report was listed here, including this many confirmed and this many clinically diagnosed and this many suspected. So when I look at this, I just think, okay, I mean, how many was there the next day? It just seems like you're either lo not looking at the authoritative uh, list or they are adding. They're just not doing it the exact same day as that. Maybe they did it the next day. I, I don't know. Like may, maybe they did underreport this, but this alone is just seems like maybe you just don't know what you're looking at. And the other thing is, um, yeah, it's about 500. That's a, that's actually a big amount, but this is confirmed again, confirmed. So the difference really is 300. Okay, cool. That That's like 10%. I mean, at this point, again, the country that this report is coming from, at this point, not 10% were unreported. More than 90% were unreported. 
So, okay, yeah, the uh, the Chinese local government made some mistakes that were nothing at all compared to the mistakes of this country, um, and they already punished uh, some of the government people for these mistakes, and they've never said that they didn't make any mistakes. So I just, again, I don't really understand what's the point of this big reveal. So the documents are by no means clear cut. This is super interesting. On two occasions, the public death numbers are narrowly overreported. Hmm. That's a little weird. Like they actually were overreporting these two. Now, why would they be doing that if their big goal is to hide this all? Right? Maybe the document that you have, again, isn't the authoritative document. Maybe you're just looking at something that's along the chain of what happens before they decide on what to actually tell the public is going on. They don't just say, oh, here's all the people that we're dealing with that have anything to do with COVID because that's just crazy. Then it's going to be even more unpredictable as you say uh, 5,000 suspected and then two days later say, oh, no, no, those 5,000 we tested them and only 200 actually had it. Right? It would be wildly inaccurate, bouncing all over the place. It's generally better to have a conservative um, release of the numbers so that you can increase them as they actually increase rather than spiking them and then pulling them back and spiking them and pulling them back. I would think that this should be pretty obvious. Long wait times for tests. Okay, give me a break. <laughs> Long wait time for tests. Oh, God. A reporting system with weeks-long delays in diagnosing new cases. CNN is in the United States of America, right? I don't... Is this... <laughs> Are you guys serious? Okay, I mean... The United States of America... The testing wait time literally ha has been months. Months. Uh, I, I don't even know how to... <laughs> I would carry on with this part. Um, so I, I can't go through this whole thing, but basically it just goes on and on and on. And there's really nothing in here that's substantial. It just sort of says, oh, there was a mistake here and there. And people have accused the Chinese government of trying to cover things up, but this doesn't really show that they cover anything up. And, you know, there was times that they underreported. And sometimes those underreporting were percent wise pretty high, but you know, other times they overreported it. And I think that there's some good stuff at the end here. Let me see. Um, oh, yeah, this is very interesting. So if you're one of those far right uh, conspiracy theorists who hate non-white people and you used to be an English teacher or whatever your your deal is, here's some information for you. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is about Dr. Lee. They'd say nothing about this, basically, except that uh, some other doctors died at the same time as him. Uh, here we go. Conversely, the leaked documents also provide something of a defense of China's overall handling of the virus. I wouldn't really say conversely. It kind of seems like this entire thread is something that's naming, uh, that, that's named as this is some condemnation of their response, but in fact is mostly clearing them. But anyway, uh, it says the report shows that in early stages of the pandemic, China faced the same problems of accounting, testing, and diagnosis that still haunt many Western democracies even now. Issues made worse by the fact that they had just encountered an entirely new virus. Um, no mention is made by officials of a so-called laboratory leak or that it was in any way man-made. As some critics, including top U.S. neocon right-wing psychopaths, have claimed without evidence. Without evidence. Uh, there is one mention of subpar facilities at a bacterial and toxic species preservation center, though the point is not elaborated on, nor is its significance made clear. Okay, so I don't know what that's about. Um, China and its healthcare workers... We're under immense strain as the outbreak took as the outbreak took hold. Blah blah blah. They were overwhelmed. They were <laughs> extremely overworked, and they were discouraged by the amount of deaths. Blah blah blah.
Many of the comments in the documents might have been made in the U.S. where over the past 15 to 20 years, at particularly the state and local level, public health funding has become constrained. I've, I've always noticed that they, they really try to use these reports as ways to drum up more money for um, the CDC in America, who just seems absolutely useless. But that's another story. The documents show healthcare officials had no comprehension as to the magnitude of the impending disaster. Oh, so they didn't know about it, Tim Pool, you psychopath. They didn't know about Huh, that's weird. It's almost like when you go off of no evidence and you just start accusing people and with, you know, nothing backing them up. And then when you actually see what they were thinking back then, they weren't thinking, oh, we're going to release this onto the world and not sell our supplies to them intentionally so everybody in the world can die, whatever other crazy stuff you're thinking. Nowhere in the files is indicated that officials believe the virus will become a global pandemic. Um, blah, 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 blah. It continues to grow day by day. So I, I didn't go over the whole thing because there's not really that much juicy stuff in the middle of it. But it's just very interesting. If we go back to the top, knowing everything that we know now, and we just look at the title again, that 60% that of people will only see this. The Wuhan files. Leaked documents reveal China's mishandling of the early stages of COVID-19. When in fact, which I don't know why they didn't capitalize it, but which in fact actually shows that all in all, China did a way better job than I thought. My God, I mean, I thought that they were just super fast and then they kind of screwed up a bit and then they turned it around and, and did way better. But not only were they super fast, they were super fast while there was a huge outbreak of influenza going on and they're already super taxed. Wow. Huh. So I got to add some stuff to the timeline. Good job, China. Ciao, y'all. And uh, that's pretty much all I was going to talk about today. So this is really just a test of the emergency broadcast system. See how this streaming thing goes. I can see all the people in my chat room are not even watching, which is great. <laughs> uh, cool. Peace out, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.